been a while. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a while. A Almost five years. So talk about it. I mean, I'm, obviously you've been building to this point. You made the decision. You've been training. But now you're here, fight week. What's, what's the emotion like for you right now? It feels damn good to say it's fight week. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like that old friend that you haven't talked to in years, and you call him up, and you're like, you haven't skipped a beat. You know, that's how I feel. I just, I feel at home with this. It's very natural. And I'm the happiest to be here that I've been in a very long time. When you made the decision to walk away, it seemed to me like, like mental burnout more than anything. Is that an accurate way to say it? Like it wasn't that you didn't feel you couldn't compete. You were just kind of tired of dealing with everything. Yeah, absolutely. I just had too much on my plate and especially like baggage that I just really didn't need. I needed to to clear away things that were taken away from me as a person, as a human being, right? We're all humans and I think we've all been through rough patches in our life, right? So that was just a really rough time for me and I just needed to step away and regroup and I kind of identified that as with the sport. But to be honest, when I've taken this four years away and I look at it and I'm more in love with the sport than I've ever been, so it, it wasn't that. It was just the entanglement of everything, and that included the sport. And when I had to step away from the toxicity, that meant I had to step away from the sport too because I just didn't know how to detangle the knot, you know, until I was outside of it. As far as coming back, is I wonder if this is like the ideal scenario, right? Like this is kind of a small fight week card after a huge event. You know what I mean? Like, you were in the spotlight, in the heat of it, like, for a long, long time. Is this kind of refreshing that it's not all of that? It's so perfect. It, it is so perfect. I'm so glad I wasn't on the Connor card. I just didn't – I've, I've loved that I've just been able to focus on what I'm doing and just get my feet wet again, right? I mean, it's been a while. It's, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, um, I feel great, and I'm rolling with the momentum, but I don't feel like I need all that right now. I'm just doing my thing, like – I could have gone to the Connor fight too and just been a guest or spectator, but I'm like, I just have, I just want to focus. I just want to do my thing. And that's what I'm going to kind of been the theme of this camp. Just very ultra focused. What do you think about the matchup with Marion? What do you think she brings to the table? What, what, do, you, what do you think about her as an opponent? Like, I think Marion is great. I, I just, I really admire her. I think she's very solid. I don't think she has a lot of holes in her game. She's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. She has that strong submission over Sarah McMahon. So impressive. She has a great submission over Jessica Andrade. And she stays in fights. You know, the fights she has lost have always been very close. She's lost a number of split decisions. She's been on the verge of being a contender a number of times, and she just didn't get her break. But... The way that I look at this fight and the Marion Renault that I prepared for is, is a mother who's going to have her son in the corner for the first time, who's going to look at somebody that matters between rounds and say, I don't want to let that person down. You know what I mean? I could only imagine as a mother if I physically saw my children between the rounds, like it's going to charge her and she's going to come and she's going to bring it. This is the fight, you know, according to her that she's always wanted. She's always wanted to fight me and there's nothing left. It's her retirement fight. So what does she have to say for? There's no title fight on the horizon. There's nothing else. So I think for her, um, she's going to bring everything that she has. So I've really had that mindset the entire camp that there is no underestimating this woman. A lot of people might because they might look at her record and say, oh, it's not the best. You know, she's never been finished in the UFC. How about that? Yeah. Who else can say? I mean, not very many women, not even the champion Amanda can say that. I can't say that. Holly can't say that. You know, I mean, a lot of the very best women in this, you know, Juliana fighting for World's she can't say that. But, but Marion can, you know, and she's fought a lot of the best. She's never been finished. So um, she's a tough old, you know, she's a, I don't want to say a tough old dog. I don't want to, you know, but you know what I'm saying? Like, she's a veteran. She's a, she, and she knows how to stay in these fights. So I'm expecting her to bring it. I know that you said that, you know, coming back, you're not, you're not wanting anything less than gold, right? You're coming back for it all. But what's the journey for you here, right? Because this would be, like you said, she's, t she's a tough, durable competitor, but not necessarily the highest ranked. You walked away at the top of the division. How do you go? I mean, do you start from the bottom and work up? Or do you think what you accomplished five years ago means that, you know, you're two or three in the world or one win away from a title shot? What, what, how do you see your journey to the top? I don't know how it translates. You know what I want to do? I just want to start with Saturday. You know what I mean? I think it's very important that I get that win and I don't look too far ahead, you know. Um, I, I, I am somebody who, right, has short-term, mid-term, long-term goals. So there's a way that I would like for it to go in a perfect world. But I know that I need to accomplish this. It's imperative that I get this win for my trajectory. And, you know, I think it's not unrealistic to say that if I have the performances that I'm planning on having, that it could be, 
you know, as little as three fights until I'm back into a title shot. You know, if, I, if I'm beating and I'm continuing to move up and I'm climbing the ranks, you know, that I think is a, a fair assumption. But, but I just want to start with Saturday and, you know, see how that goes. It's the last thing for me, like you said, I mean, you pick up a win or two, that spotlight's going to get super intense once again, all right? Uh, do you welcome that? I mean, do you, or do you feel like I don't want it to be like it was a time before? Because like I said, I know that the pressure and the intensity on you was, was a lot. Yeah, you know, it was a lot, but I, I, again, I still don't think that it was the, the pressure or the intensity that was the problem. I just think it was me and where I was at, you know, that I just couldn't handle more of anything. So, you know, when, when you're, you're in a place of uh, depression, when you're in a dark place, when you're, you're suffering, but you're putting on this, this front and face, and I'm trying to convince myself a lot of the time, you know, that I'm okay, um, you know, it just, I just didn't have it to give anymore. That's really what it boiled down to. I just didn't have it to give anymore. And I, I was so used to that because since I was 19 years old and I started fighting, that's the way it had always been. It had always been that way in my personal life and it had always been that way through my entire career. And I always felt like, you know what, that's how it is. You know, I thought maybe kind of was how it was for everyone, I guess. And I just did and I showed up and I you know, cry here and go do this and, you know, have my emotional despair here and go do and and perform in spite of. But I'm at a place now where I feel like I don't need any of that. What if I just got rid of it all and I just allowed myself to be the very best version? That's where I'm at. So I feel very charged and very excited to move forward this Saturday and pursue this second part of my career. So it is upgraded. It's upgrade time. Tate 2.0. Hey, Misha. Hi. Um, there's this narrative that men, after they have children, they have this dad power. And then when the female fighters have children, it's sort of like, oh, no, look, they have children. They're going to have these performances that aren't so great. Why do you think that is? I mean, why do you think that fans are so negative about women having children and then fighting after? I have no idea, but I'm not because I'm, I feel like I'm proof that I'm stronger than I've ever been. And I think some of the women out there who are mothers, you know, I mean, Marion is one, Michelle Watterson, um, Nina Ansaroff, right? Um, and then and, and, uh, the jiu-jitsu, I'm just drawing a blank on her name. Mackenzie. Yes, Mackenzie. What a prime example of a fierce mother, you know? Um, there's just something that changes about you. I think mind-body connection when you have a child and you bring life into that, it's such an empowering moment that um, I think people question because physically our bodies go through a lot that, you know, dads don't have to go through that, right? So people question, oh, how can they, you know, go physically this way, which is the opposite direction of being a professional athlete, and how could they physically get back to that? I have never once this camp looked at my old self and say, I want to get back to that. I have said, I want to be better than that, and I am. Thank you. Misha over here. Yes. Um, I feel like uh, early in your career, especially when you got to the UFC, you know, you were part of obviously a big rivalry and everyone likes to pick teams, right? Lakers, Celtics, Ronda, Misha. Right. Since you've now, you know, you've done so much, you do the Sirius XM thing and you've been such a big personality, do you feel like the fans have kind of come around to you in that second chapter of your career where you weren't fighting as opposed to when you first got to the UFC? Do I think that they've come around to the second chapter of my career? Like, do you feel like you've just yeah. gotten a new wave of support that maybe oh. you didn't when you were here? You know, I'm, I'm very surprised, actually, that it's, people have been overwhelmingly supportive. And the, the Internet is a very cruel world, so I anticipated a lot of backlash, especially, you know, coming back as a mother. I've had two children. You know, I expected people to um, really be adamant that I was, you know, I'm going to suck and that the sports passed me by. And I have heard that, sure. But... Um, not as much naysay as I expected. I really expected, you know, I was braced for it. I was like, here it comes. Oh, I was like, that wasn't so bad. Actually, people are pretty excited about this, and people have been pretty, pretty on board. So I would say it's been 90% positive, which is that's pretty, pretty remarkable for the Internet world this day. <laughs> you mentioned a lot of the mom fighters, and, you know, you've, we've seen a lot of them, and they're very, you know, upfront about their kids are part of their careers. Is there a particular part of this that you want to share with your kids? Is it about having them there with you at the weigh-ins like Amanda has done? Is it anything in particular that you want to share with them? Um, I want my children... My daughter's only three. She's at a friend's house right now, and my son is one. So, um, I mean, I want to share it all with them, but I, I want them to just be children, and I don't want them to 
live to, you know, to my, my expectations, if you will. I just want them to enjoy the process as children, right? So we are also in that pandemic world, right? So it's closed venue. It's closed a lot of those things. So um, they probably will not be in attendance, but... Uh, you know, I, I try to involve my daughter as much as possible. Like, if you watch my, shout out my new YouTube series, right? I got a newly YouTube, newly launched, if I could speak, YouTube channel. And uh, we're doing kind of a series of my my comeback journey. And Amaya is very much a part of that. So is my son, but he's one, so he naps a lot. <laughs> but yeah, she closes the door for my sparring sessions. And um, I have to laugh because the other day, Johnny and I were headed to the Chappelle show. We would, we wanted to just have a, a laugh, right? Lighthearted close to camp. And we call my daughter for bedtime and, okay, mommy. I was like, all right, good night, honey. Have a good night. My mom's putting her to bed. And she just says to me, and don't smack anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so in her little mind, she knows that mommy fights. She sees me spar. She sees me smack people, quote unquote, you know. So she does understand it from that perspective. But I think um, I just want her to stay, you know, stay innocent, stay a child and enjoy it. I want her to think mommy's playing, you know, because I am. That's what I'm doing. You know, I'm doing what I love. I'm doing what I enjoy. Two more. Um, uh, you were part of a lot of different things before you had, uh, you know, gone off to one. You were doing a bit of analyst work, and you were managing fighters like Gustavo. Mm -hmm. I know you're also involved working with Amanda Serrano, big boxing champion. I mean, do you plan to still be active with some of those things as you spend more time here in the states, or is it just it's just MMA? I'm not going to do the extracurriculars like before. No, so the extracurriculars were more when I retired as far as managing other fighters. I thought, oh, well, maybe this is a good way for me to stay involved in the sport and try to give back from the lessons I've learned. Um, but those fighters are all doing great. Cheyenne Vlismas or Cheyenne, Cheyenne Bays, if I'm saying that right. If I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, so she's in the UFC and so is her husband. And they're, doing all, they're all doing fantastic. So I'm very happy for all of them. Um, and... Yeah, I don't think I'll be doing that, to answer your question. I think that's what you were going to say. No, I will not be working with fighters or managing because, uh, to be honest, I have kids now and I have a lot of other stuff that I have to do. So I've got to focus on becoming a champion again, goal number one, and uh, being the best mother I can be. Are you still going to be coming out to Roar? That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Mish, you, we, we spoke about the, the mental and how much baggage you had in the past and how that's no longer there. How does that manifest itself, itself physically? How do you feel physically compared to when you had all that baggage? The mind follows the body. Uh, excuse me, the other way around. God, the body. Well, in that case, huh? It probably was. Uh, the body follows the mind. So the mind is the, you know, the, the driver, if you will. The body's the engine. And uh, my driver was very broken for a long time, and I've, I've fixed it through finding myself, you know, the past four years have been a lot of soul searching and um, meeting great people and a lot of credit and love to my fiance sitting over there who's just the most supportive man in the world, um, could care less about himself. It's just, it's, it's so nice and so refreshing to be with somebody who's not competing with me, you know, who's just giving and pushing and helping and supporting. So it's a very different situation, different than anything that I'm used to and that's why I'm just head over heels you know, I love, love this man to death. But um, when my two children have added such a lightheartedness to this camp, I just can't explain the joy that I have in the polarity of my life, that I get to go and be a fighter and do the most physical, physically grueling, mentally tough, emotionally, um, you know, uh, it, it just pulls from you in all these different directions. Um, and then go home and kiss my kids to sleep, you know what I mean? It's just, it's such a good life that I have now. Very fulfilled. Sometimes when we remove those baggages from our lives, it can still be like a very challenging process just because it'd be very difficult, there's a lot of emotions. Once you get through that and then you start this process of coming back to fight, is it almost a daily validation of like, oh, I can't believe I made the right decision in my life to do this? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sometimes when I just look at myself in the mirror, not just physically the changes, but the energy that I feel when I read myself, you know, and that's something that I've really worked on because I think sometimes we don't take the time to stop and ask ourselves how we're really feeling. We just go about our day and we, we just try to get through it and we just try to manage and, 
you know, we get so busy and then, and sometimes we feel really stuck. Like that's how I felt. I felt very stuck and I just didn't know how to get out. So I just kind of was like, I have no other choice though. Right. So I, so I left everything that I behind and I kind of just jumped off the deep end in another direction, which was a mission to find myself. And I'm such a, a much more secure person now. I think I had a lot of deep-seated insecurities before that I didn't realize, like, what, who am I without fighting and who am I outside of this relationship, you know, because it had been so, it had been so controlled in a way that um, I just didn't know, like, I didn't know who I was, right? So to answer your question about all that stuff and, re, like, finding myself and asking myself those tough questions, right, and getting into a healthy place, um, yes, I look at myself and I'm just like, I cannot even believe that a year ago from today, you know, I was a month, one month postpartum and I was saying to myself, I want to fight again. And now I look at the transformation and I, I am blown away. You know, I'm not trying to like flow my own boat or anything like that. But to be honest, I mean, it was hard at that point to imagine myself not just back to where I was at my best, but better than that, it's crazy. You know, I'm lighter than I've ever been. I'm stronger than I've ever been. And I'm, I'm truly more motivated and I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy. Last thing for me, to win a world title is obviously an incredible accomplishment. But to win a world title after a comeback, would that mean even more to you? It would have to, right? I mean, the journey that I've been through um, to get to this point um, starting a family, taking a break, doing all those things, being a mother, you know, I want to send a message loud and clear, you know, whether I become a champion again or not is, is sort of irrelevant to this point, but um, that we need to support mothers in their dreams and goals and ambition more as a society because I think the expectation, and even I bought into this, I think there's old interviews that you can see of me um, probably maybe when I fought Katz and Gano because I was thinking how, how would I mentally fight or how would I fight when I become a mother? Because I thought once you become a mother, like it's all about the kids. I, I genuinely bought into that narrative. And once you become a mother, it is all about the kids. But how you service your children is servicing yourself first. That's how I be, am the best mother. So that's how I came to this conclusion. So I want to lead with example. And if my goals of becoming a world champion again, I'm able to, to do that, which I see absolutely no reason why I can't. Um, I won't put any limitations on myself or let anybody else do that. Then, yes, it would be quite an amazing accomplishment. And I'll be happy and hope that I set a good example for my children. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Misha, talking to people around the gym, they, they agree with what you're saying is that you're in a better place mentally, better place physically, and, and this is as good as you've looked in a long, long time, obviously. But is there, is there a danger to being in too good of a place and trying to fight when, you're, when you don't have, like, the weight of the world on you? Is there a danger of being in too good of in a too place? Too good of a place. Like, you're like, why am I trying to hurt this person? Like, I'm just in a great place. Like, oh, I'm not right, right, it. right. To I mean... Sure, I think that there is, but I think that depends how you interpret that good place and what your goals really are. You know, I think if you're in a cushy place and you just feel like, you know, I don't really have to do this, but I, oh, I kind of want. It's like, no, like I feel so motivated. Nobody is saying I have to do this. Nobody's telling me I should. Like this came from my heart and my will and my desire. So I don't see any detriment about me being in an emotionally fulfilled and stable place because, um, it has taken nothing away from my desire. If anything, it's fed it. So I, not, not in my situation. And, you know, you, you talked a little bit about not being on that card last week, being on this card instead and away from the chaos. Have you thought about, like, how different the, the ring walk is going to be? You haven't really been in this environment of no fans. And, like, maybe if the motion was there, if everybody's screaming and yelling while you're walking, it's different than walking into a cage in an empty environment. Yeah, of course I've thought about it, but I do have experience from the Ultimate Fighter coaching. Yeah. So I've, you know, been through and seen a number of fights that were in a closed venue and I you get that experience, right? I'm sure I wasn't the one fighting, but I'm emotionally invested and I'm right there and you get that feel of how it's different in a closed arena. And then um I I went to the uh, Ige and Zombie fight here just to get the feels of what it looked like, how it ran, um what it was like with the closed audience, but Truthfully, I 
have zero doubt in my ability to show up and fight at any point. I think if you put me in the octagon and you put gloves on me and you say, it's time to fight, it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the night. It's what I was born to do. And, and how much have you thought about the moment when you step in the cage on Saturday? It's been, you know, five years since it happened. Just like the between stepping in the cage and actually fighting. Because once the bell rings, it's a fight, and you know that. But that moment from stepping in the cage till the bell ringing, what is that going to be like for you, and how much have you kind of thought about that? I visualize it, right, and I'll get like a visceral reaction. Even just you saying that, it's like I, I picture it in my mind, and I see it, and I feel the canvas. You know, I've uh, sparred quite a bit at the uh, UFC Performance Institute with the cage there and that canvas, and I've really visualized this. You guys can probably know I'm big on visualization, so I've seen that moment a lot of times, and uh, it's just a charge. I just feel charged. I feel ready. I feel excited for victory, that it's 15 minutes or less away. And uh, that's, that's it. That's just how I envision that moment going. You know, she's going to be ready to, to come at me. I'm going to be ready to, to go at her. And that's, that's what Saturday night's going to be all about. And you talked about, uh, you know, a year ago, a month out uh, from, from your child being born and, and thinking, like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like, what, was there one moment, though, where it went from I want to fight to Yep, I'm doing it. I'm fighting. Like, was there one particular moment or was that a process? It, it, there was a particular moment. I, I can't pinpoint exactly what in the time frame that it was, but I was pregnant when the idea, like very pregnant, <laughs> when the idea first went through my mind, like, I think I want to fight again. And I blame it all on the pandemic, so there's always a silver lining <laughs> to this, right? But I was like, I think I want to fight again. Um, and it wasn't until the sport was completely voided out of my life that I really started to understand how much I missed it. And I think I was in denial about that for quite some time. And then I, I had my son, and I could not wait to just walk on a treadmill. Like, I literally, it was like, that was the only thing I could do, but I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get in shape, and I'm going to fight. And I was like, uh-oh. I was like, oh, man, this is real. Like, it didn't go away. It wasn't just pregnancy hormones. Like, this is, no, it's, it, was, it was real, and I knew it at that point. So, I mean, I was a week or ten days postpartum, and I was just walking on a treadmill thinking about fighting again, thinking about every step I take, I'm one step closer to getting to the point where I can compete again. Thanks very much.